Hi everyone, so this is the second video in the uh, series on elementary programming for EECS 1021, object-oriented programming from sensors to actuators. We're talking about Java and operations and data. All right, so today we're gonna to be doing operations and data. This comes after the intro to Java, the general intro. So we're gonna be talking about input and output and then more input and output, then number types and conversions, and then the software development process later on. All right, so, Literals, what are literals? Literals are constant values that appear directly in a program. We have character literals. Character literals basically are single values, a letter, a number, uh, and they are surrounded by single straight quotes. The single straight quote that you typically find beside your enter key on the keyboard, this is for a US English keyboard, and so it'd be, um, there'd be a double quote and then a single quote on that key right beside the enter key. All right, and so you have a single uh, letter or number or a symbol, like a star or an equal sign or, or a parenthesis uh, in between these single quotes. You can also have um, a space uh, between the single quotes. That's also valid. It's not valid to have um, two single quotes and nothing in between, so like an empty character. That's not supposed to happen. Now, you can have these single characters, but you can also have strings, which are basically combinations or multiples of uh, letters and numbers and symbols and that. Uh, in this case, you are allowed to have an empty one, okay, with with nothing in between the double quotes and use the double quotes to signify the beginning and end of a string. So you can have the beginning of a string, the value in the string, so this is the letter A and the end of the string, or you could have beginning of the string, Y-O-R-K, so York, and end of the string like that. You could have different symbols. You could also have blank space. This could be uh, a single space, like on the space bar, when you hit the space bar key, or it could be multiple um, uh, blank spaces. You can also have literals that are integers or whole numbers. And, uh, and so uh, there's no quotation marks around them. Uh, and these are the ones that you normally use in like math uh, equations and that, okay? So these are numbers that you would use like uh, the number zero, negative 123, positive 123, or say 23,943. These are all just examples of whole numbers that can be used uh, and are, are considered literals or integer literals. You can also have floating point literals. And these are uh, numbers that have both that whole part to the left of the decimal point and the decimal part to the right hand side of the decimal point. Examples would be 0.334, Okay, there's the decimal point right there. And so this is the fractional part right here, and that's the integer or whole number on the on the uh, top end of it. 12.0, right? There's the, the decimal point right there. That's another floating point number. Uh, 34.298, that's another floating point number. And then you can have scientific notation uh, represented numbers as well. So if you were to uh, say, um, uh, want to represent 123.4, five, six, you could in scientific notation, okay, where you'd have one, and then the decimal point right there, and then the one, two, three, or sorry, the two, three, four, five, six right here, after the decimal point. Basically, by having the E plus two at the end, okay, this is what you would write in your program, what you're doing is you're saying you're representing it this way, which would, you would normally do like in a math class, or a, a physics class, or a chemistry class, this is how you typically represent it on paper. And basically what you're saying is this is 123.456. Uh, so 1, 2, 3, 0. 4, 5, 6, because this is a multiplication by a factor of 100. Now, you can represent small numbers. So a number that would be less than uh, 1 uh, by going the other way, by, by taking that 2, that 2 right there, and making it negative. So for instance, if you wanted to represent a smaller than one number, okay, so you want to go the opposite way. Instead of multiplying by 100, you want to divide by 100. You would say uh, 100, uh, so 1.23456 uh, times 10 to the power of negative 2, okay, and that would give you a solely fractional uh, number. All right, now, literals can be uh, complicated, um, or in terms of how they are used with each other. All right, so uh, here's here's an example of, of something that makes sense. So uh, when you're using uh, two, two uh, sort of single letter um, literals, the letter A, and you want to represent them in, in sort of a printout 
um, function. So the print line function right here. You can print out characters. Okay, so a single character like that, the character A, it'll just print that out to the screen. You could also use it as a, you could declare it as a string like that with double quotes around it, and it will print A to the screen as well. Okay, that perfectly fine, no problem. Okay, so you get the same result in both cases. Now, if you're doing a comparison, you want to know is string A equal to, that's the equal right there, is it equal to um, character A? And the answer is, well, you're not supposed to do this. This is uh, what's referred to as a type error because this right here is a string and that right there is a character. And this results in a type error. It's the same as basically saying, comparing apples and, and, and oranges. You, you don't do that, okay? You, you, you shouldn't because they're not the same thing. Um, so a literal A as a string uh, consists of a, uh, of a single character, but it is a string. It is a sequence of characters. It's just the sequence is, well, trivial. On the other hand, uh, A by, by itself right here is a single character. They are, they appear superficially to be the same thing, but they are not, okay, because their types are different. We'll talk about types in a moment. So you cannot compare a character sequence with just a character. Okay, they are two different things. And character sequence, this is what we refer to as a string. All right, operations. We've been sort of beating around the bush here about um, the, these things that where things are brought together and then, and then we, we perform operations on them. Well, these operations, what are they? An operation refers to the process of applying an operator to an operand. So these are three different keywords here. Operation is everything together. An operator is the, uh, the thing that performs the action. And the operands are the things that the action is applied to. Let's talk about um, cases where the results of operations are numbers, so numerical operations. So we can talk about uh, 1 plus 1 plus uh, 0 0.34. Okay, so this is an operand, that's an operand, and this is an operator, and together this is an operation. All right, so the result of this will be a number. I want to divide 13 by 4. This is an operator. That's an operand. That's an operand. That is an operation. The result uh, will be a number as well. We can do the same thing here, where we've got a floating point divided by a whole number. Okay, there's going to be some uh, some conversion of data types in here um, that happen automatically. But regardless, this is a number. It's an operand. That's another number. That's an operand. And this right here is an operation. It will uh, result in a, in a number. Okay. You can also use the modulo, which is another operation. Now, don't confuse this with the uh, the symbol for doing uh, comments in MATLAB. This is this is a uh, um, an actual operator right here. So this is an operator right here. So it's an operator. This is an operand. That's another operand. And together this is an operation. Okay, and this will give a number as a result. Okay, in this case, it'll be the remainder of one. Now, negative 45 basically is the same thing as basically saying minus one multiplied by 45. That's your operator. That's your operand. That's another operand. That is an operation. All right, now you have relational operations where the results are going to be either true or false. So here, we're going to use the operate operator of less than or equal to on operand three and four. So we're going to ask, is three less than or equal to four? And the result will end up being true. Here's another version of a, or another example of a relational operation. We have is five less than three? And the answer is going to be false. So the, the result of the operation is false. Is, is 56 equal to 34? Okay, so we have two operands, one operator, one operation. The answer is false. We can also concatenate. So we can think of this as an operation as well, where you have one operand. Uh, let's see, we have another operand right there and another operand right there. We have an operator, another operator, and uh, and we're going to have multiple, well, we're going to have operations here. So um, let's see if we go left. Let's see, imagine we go left to right here and this would be one operation. We get take the result of that, then you take it um, and, and you do that operation right there. But it will eventually be equi equivalent to having a single string where it's York space university like that. All right.
you can combine operations as well into what we refer to as expressions. So an expression is a composition of operations. An, an expression may be, uh, well, should be, type correct. So that for each constituent operation, the types of the operands are compatible with the co corresponding operator. So if you're going to add things together, they should be the things that you're adding together should be compatible with the addition operator, all right, or multiplication or modulo, all right. So here we have uh, integers and we add them together. One integer is an operand. Another integer is an operand is compatible with the operator plus. We can uh, then see that over here, the same same thing over here. You have your operator right here and the operands that go with it are compatible with it. Then you have your multiplication, which is going to be compatible with the type that results from here and the type that results from there. Um, if Actually, that should have had two quotes right there. You can concatenate two different strings like this. That would also work. Right there. Um, here are examples of uh, not correct um, operations. Okay, so for instance, if you have two strings and you apply the modulo to it, you shouldn't do that. That is not type correct because modulo is not supposed to be used on strings. Um, in this case right here, you see that York is fine. University is fine. It's York space actually. It has an operator right here. This will concatenate that. So this right here is type correct. Over here, 46 modulo 4, that is also type correct. So then you've got a number over here and you've got a string over here. How about the multiplication, the operator between these two? And well, the, the end result here, or the, the, the conclusion that we need to draw from this is that this will not be compatible with a string and a number on this side. It is the first two operations are type correct, but the third one is clearly not type correct. All right, so we've talked about operations. We've talked about bringing these operations together. Uh, we also need to talk about data types. So um, there are different types of integers, for instance. So you can have a byte, short, int, or long. And, and the thing that distinguishes these are um, basically the, the range of values that can fit within them. So a byte is defined using uh, eight binary bits, which means it can represent a total of two to the power of eight numbers. Two to the power of eight is 256. So it can represent 256 distinct integer values. Now, we typically break this up into uh, negative and positive numbers. So that 256 total values gets broken up into uh, 100, sorry, minus 128, all the way up to negative one, okay? Then zero, then one, all the way up to 127, positive. All of these values right here give us a total of 256 different numbers. So minus 128 all the way up to uh, 127. We represent the 127 by two to the power of seven minus one. You can see the uh, minus 128 right here, which is two to the power, it's negative one multiplied by two to the power of seven. Okay, so that's what we've got right here. Now we can go further than that with short. A short is 16 bits. Okay, so basically it's two to the power of 16. All right, which is, um, it, if, if we represent it in terms of negative and positive numbers, then you start off at the bottom at negative two to the power of 15, then up to zero, and then from there it goes all the way up to, to the power, positive two to the power of 15 minus one, in a very, well, in exactly the same way that we defined um, 127 being two to the power of seven minus one up here for eight bits. You can have 32 bits as well, where at the bottom end, we have an integer that is valued at minus two to the power of 31. And at the positive end, we have two to the power of 31 minus one. Okay, 64 bits as well, and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Now, this uh, is important because of uh, well, two things. One, in terms of the amount of space on your SD card, on your hard drive, in uh, RAM, that these um, variables, etc., will take, as well as um, the number of bits that your 
machine is really comfortable with dealing with um, in hardware. So a 32-bit machine will deal with 32-bit numbers and last really well, but will struggle to the way that computers struggle if you throw it a 64-bit number. A 64-bit machine will be able to, to crack all these numbers rel relatively easily. Um, and so sometimes you have to select the type of number that you're dealing with, whether it's a 32-bit number or a 16-bit number or an 8-bit number, based on these constraints that you have in terms of the machine type that you've got and the amount of space that you have available to you. Floating point numbers. So we have integer types, now we have floating point numbers. There are two basic types of floating point numbers. There are floating point numbers that can be represented by 32 bits, and then there's 64-bit floating point numbers. On a 32-bit machine, it generally makes sense to constrain yourself to 32-bit floating point numbers if you want it to go as fast as you can. On 64-bit machines, then going to 64 bits is, is just as good as going to 32 bits. Um, but it does take more space, okay, on your hard drive or your SD card or in RAM. So you have to, you have to worry about those things. Um, but in the sort of programs that we deal with in an introductory course like this, for the most part, it doesn't really matter. We have character types as well. So character types are single, uh, or they're sets of single characters, and then strings, which are uh, character sequences, which we've talked about just uh, earlier. So integers, floating points, characters, and strings. Now, all of this to say, you have to commit to one of these types in Java when you set things up. This is not the case in some languages like MATLAB, where it's a lot more fluid, okay? And MATLAB takes care of those sort of changes automatically for you. You don't have to be explicit about it. Um, or you can get away with it. In Java, you, ha you have to make sure that you, you, you stick to the type uh, that you intend. And that will typically mean that you're going to select one type of, say, integer, say it could be an int, a 32-bit int, or a, a floating point, uh, a float floating point number, or a string, etc. Okay, But you declare it to be of a particular type, and then you store those values in that particular type. All right, next up, assignments. An assignment designates a value for a variable or initializes a named constant. Variables and constants are different things. That is, an assignment replaces the old value stored in a placeholder with a new value. Now, we've done this in previous programming classes, um, where we've used the assignment operator, a single equal sign like that. All right, The assignment operator has two operands. On the left is the assignment target, what you're assigning that value to. All right, And then on the right-hand side of the operate, operator, you've got the assignment source. So the equation, basically, typically, um, that you are... Uh, writing or you've written that will get um, send a value into the assignment target. So here is an example in terms of uh, a string. So your variable is called name one. It is of type string. It's defined, see the double quote right there and the double quote there, by a bunch of letters and characters right there. And I put a semicolon at the end right there. This is a valid assignment. I'm using the equal sign right here as the assignment operator. On the other hand, this is an invalid assignment. I have a uh, variable called name, or name one, sorry. It's a variable type string. I'm going to assign it one plus two multiplied by 23 modulo five. These are integer, these are numbers, but I declared it as a type string. This is not allowed. This is verboten, okay? This is not supposed to happen. All right, name constants versus variables. What are they? They are both uh, placeholders. They're identifiers. They're keywords, or not keywords. They're they're they're, they're things that you write in your your program uh, that will have values given to them. So they must be declared with a type, string, float, integer, before they are used. Okay. Now, in this case right here, I have something I'm going to call pi. I'm going to make it of type double floating point, and I'm going to say that it's final, which means it is a constant. I'm going to assign it the value of 3.14159. Okay, so this is a constant, and, uh, and, and that's how I set it up. I could also have a variable called radius, which at the beginning of my program, I don't really know the value for it, because I'm going to have to do some calculations later on. I say that it's going to be of type double floating point, I give it its name, but I do not assign it a value. It is an uninitialized variable. Now, 
you can only store a value that is compatible with its declared type. This is the declared type. That's the declared type. Um, and then, and then also what's important to point out is that name constants and variables are different in that a named constant like this must be initialized using the assignment operator and it cannot change its value afterwards, which makes sense. Um, there, there are some numbers that you will use in your solutions that never have to change, like the value of pi, all right? Or um, say the value of gravity. Most of the time that never ever changes. So uh, the difference though uh, between the name constant and a variable is that a variable may change its stored value as needed, which is the case for radius right here. We know that in the process of, of running your program, that value of radius uh, may change once, it may change multiple times. And so you have to um, permit for that to happen. Now, you can initialize a variable to be uh, of a, um, a value to begin with. We could initialize it, for instance, to be equal to zero to begin with. Okay, and that's permissible. All right, and in a lot of cases, this is a desirable thing that you set it up to a, a zero value to begin with. Now, finally, augmented assignments. There are some uh, tricky looking assignment uh, uh, operators out there, and it's just important to, to get them out of the way so that you know what they are. All right, so in programs that you write, you will often have to update a variable. And, uh, and, and you'll often see it like this, where so you're talking about uh, some calculation about balance sheets on your uh, bank statement or something like that and you say that your balance is equal to this is the new value of balance is equal is equal to it's being assigned the old value of the balance plus there's your operation right or your operator right there a variable called deposit okay this will update the value of balance you could also have a, a withdrawal on here okay so your new value of balance is being assigned the old value of balance minus some variable called withdraw. This is a perfectly normal thing that happens. We see it all the time. It happens so often that in languages like um, Java or C or other languages like that, you have sort of a double uh, symbol operator, plus equals. And this is effectively the same thing as saying this. Okay, it's just a shortcut. And, uh, and this one right here is minus equals. It's the same thing. It's basically saying balance is equal to balance plus deposit. M balance is equal to uh, balance minus withdraw. You can also do um, uh, these sort of trivial increments and de decrements of, by one. And you can do something like this, uh, I plus plus or J minus minus. So minus minus means subtract, It'd be J is equal to J minus one. In this case, I plus plus is I is equal to I plus one. These are things that happen so often that they have these dedicated shortcuts in languages like Java. It happens all the time. Now, on the other hand, there are these bizarre ones like this, uh, the, the post uh, increment or the pre uh, increment right here. These are super confusing. Very few people get it right. Don't use it. Don't do this. This is a bad idea. Okay. It's allowed. Don't do it. These, on the other hand, are good. This down here is bad. Don't do it. All right. So there you go. So this is video number two in our uh, elementary programming series for Java.